When it comes to data analysis, few tools are as powerful and widely used as SQL. Whether you're talking to a data analyst, a data scientist, a data engineer, or a database administrator, they all have one thing in common. Each of these people knows SQL like the back of their hand. But what exactly is SQL? What's it used for? And why is it critical for so many roles in data? SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's what we use to work with relational databases. In relational databases, we store data in tables, which are made up of columns and rows, similar to what you may have seen in an Excel spreadsheet. The individual tables each have primary keys, which are used to uniquely identify a specific row in the table. Those rows of data can also contain foreign keys, which are used to map data from one table to another. This multi-table structure is where SQL gets its power, because we're able to store so much data in an organized way that's easy to navigate once you get your head around it. Next, let's talk about how SQL is actually leveraged and implemented within an organization. We can break this down into four stages. The first step is setting up the infrastructure. The company will get a server running, and that server will be dedicated to hosting schemas and tables that will make up your relational database. In the old days, servers were hosted on site, but now it's more typical to run cloud-hosted servers with platforms like Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure. The infrastructure setup phase is typically done by a database administrator or a data engineer. After that, the company will be ready to build their data model. At this stage, we're designing the database, talking about what the business needs are, what tables we'll need, what columns will go into those tables, how they'll relate to one another, and thinking about how we'll populate the schema with data. When we're ready to implement our data model, we'll be running SQL create statements, naming tables and columns, adding constraints to those columns, prescribing data types, and mapping primary to foreign key relationships that will allow our relational database to have its structure between tables. All of this is done using SQL. This step is usually handled by a database administrator or data engineers, but there's a lot of input from data analysts, data scientists, and other stakeholders around the business who want to weigh in on the types of data that the company is gonna to need to store for its operations. After the data model is set up, we're ready for the next step, which is populating our tables with data. In most cases, this is an ongoing process that sets up automation to bring in data from a variety of sources. You might get information from the use of your web application, from e-commerce transactional data, from information input by your customers, or potentially even third-party sources like marketing channels. This stage is typically handled by your data engineers or database administrators in some cases, and there's also situations where people outside of the data team will be responsible for this. It's not uncommon to have people on the development team with the title of a back-end engineer or a full-stack engineer who will be populating your tables with data. But whoever's working on this, it's all about setting up the infrastructure to collect data in real time in an automated fashion on all of the things that you need to run your business. At this point, the infrastructure is set up, the data model has been built, and we're populating our tables with data. It's on to what I think is the most fun part, the data analysis. This is where data analysts and data scientists start writing SQL queries to pull the data they need from the database. Once they have the data they need, they might use tools like Power BI, Tableau, or Excel to visualize the data to pull out the insights, or they might use statistical tools like R or Python to do modeling work and some predictive analytics. Others might just use SQL alone to get the job done. It really depends on the particular analysis and the skill set of the analyst. Throughout the entire workflow, storing, managing, and querying data in a relational database requires SQL to get the job done. And if you want to build a strong career in data, SQL is and will continue to be one of the cornerstones that will help you be successful. It's extremely widely used, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I hope you found this video helpful. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Drop me a comment if there's something else you'd like to learn, and I hope to see you in the next one.